All right, guys, we'll be doing fundamental problem 411 today, and now it's getting a little more complicated than the than the ones we've been doing previously, All right? Uh, just because we have the third dimension, right, the z-axis, okay? So whenever you see a force, okay, and that force is being translated along some direction that it's not just the x, the y, or the z, you have to compute the unit vector of this, okay? Because that force is being shared with the z-axis, x-axis, and y-axis, okay? So in order to do that, we want to calculate uh, this distance, okay, in red. All right, so let's see. What's, what's the distance from B to C? So we'll call it what's distance from B to C. Okay, and we'll do it in Cartesian vector format. All right, so in order to get, if you're standing up here, you'd have to first go down two feet, right? You want to go down two feet. Actually, let's do that in different color. You want to go down two feet, okay? So that's going to be minus two, okay? Because you're going down in the k direction, okay? Then we're going to walk up four feet in the positive x direction. So that's 4i. And then we're going in the negative y direction, okay, four feet as well, so minus 4j, okay, and that's, that'll be the distance from b to c, okay, now, the next step is to calculate the unit vector, some books, Hebler, I believe, uses this notation for the unit vector, let's call it bc, okay, if you're used to beer, uh, the author here he does it like this okay and I will be doing um, I will be doing those problems as well the ones from beer for statics yeah statics Hebler and beer are kind of equivalent for dynamics definitely go with Hebler all right so in order to compute the unit vector right we need to do okay what is the vector RBC, okay, divided by the magnitude of that vector, okay, and to make sure you're doing this right, whenever you get the components here, okay, everything should be between 0 and 1, okay, 0, if there's nothing going along the i direction, right, then you would have a 0, but in this case we have 4i minus 4 4j minus 2k. And then over here we have 4 squared. And I'm not going to add the negative just because we're going to square it anyways. So I'm not going to waste time adding that negative sign. Okay. All right, so let's see. This is 16 plus 16, 32 plus 4. Oh, I found the calculator here. Okay, so 16 plus 16 plus 4. Oh, that's 36. Yeah, so square root of 36. Duh. And then divided by 4i minus 4j minus 2k okay all over this uh, so okay so our unit vector will be our unit vector along line BC is 4 divided by 6 I minus 4j divided by 6 minus 2 divided by 6k all right so that's what I mean so it's got to be a fraction between 0 and 1 okay if if I if this gave us a 1 it means the force 
is only going in the i direction. So there wouldn't be a j or a k component. If it's going in two directions, so when we have 2d, obviously this, the k direction would, would go away and we'd have ij like we've done before. Okay. So now, in, now in order to get the actual force vector in Cartesian coordinates, right? Because they gave us a magnitude here. There's just the magnitude of that force. Now we're going to redirect that 120 uh, pounds into its different directions. So we're going to multiply it with the unit vector. I guess I'll write it down. Okay. So it's usually f dot uh, or f times uh, the unit vector. Okay. So this will be not dotted. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. So it's the force times the unit vector because there's a scalar multiplied with a vector. Okay. Gives you back a vector. So we're going to do 120 times, this is two thirds, I, two thirds J, and then one third K. And the reason I'm doing this is because now we have the force, and then in order to determine the moment of force F about point O, we need to get the force in vector format. And then once we do that, we can just take the um, curl in order to calculate the moment. Okay. So now, uh, let's see. So now we need the distance from the point O to the point of application. Okay, so that's going to be, so from O, from the pivot point, to where the force is being applied. This way, and this way. Okay, so we need to find that distance. Okay. So now, another way you could do it is, uh, you know that the line of action of our force here in red. Uh, let me just delete this. Let's delete some of this red. Okay, there's the force. Okay, you know that that force, right, the line of action cuts through you know, all the way like this. It goes like this, it cuts across, and it crosses a point in the x-axis here. So I could also do the moment um, of that force. The moment that that force transferred, transfers over to O and taking the moment about C because the line of act, in order to shift the line of action over to O, I have to move uh, that line of action over uh, five feet in the X. Okay. And that'll also give me a, my moment. All right. If that's confusing, I'll try to make it clearer here. So first let's do it the old fashioned way. All right. Let's get a distance from O to the point of application of force from O to B. Okay. So the distance from O to B is going to be, all right. How many in the, uh, I direction? Well, we have to go one. So one I. How many in the J? Well, we have to go all this. That's four J. And now how many in the K? Two. And it's plus two because you're going up. Okay. Crossed with our force. And that's going to be, let's see times two divided by three, so that's gonna be eighty I minus eighty J minus forty K. Okay. 
So like I explained to you guys in the previous problem how um, we could um, do the cross product in one line like this, or we can set up the determinant. So let's set up the determinant for this one. So it's got all three components for each one. So I, J, K. Oh, it's so hard to write with this. And then one, we're putting all the components of our uh, distance vector here. Two, and then here we have 80. Minus 80, minus 40, okay, equals, okay, now let's do this. To get a determinant, first we want to compute the i, so it's going to be this, uh, I pretend that it kind of loops around this way, and it comes back in, kind of like Pac-Man, you enter, you exit from this side, and it come back in from this side of the screen. So and you go like that. So it's four times mi four times minus forty minus two times minus eighty. So I two oops tricking myself here. Um, four times minus forty minus and then 2 times minus 80 okay and then this is some get rid of some negative so we know negative negative here so plus plus okay now we know that this usually alternates i is plus j is negative k is plus okay All right, so the next one will be minus j, okay? And now I'm going from right, I'm going towards the right and then multiplying with the ones across up to the left. So again, let's do it like we did in the i. So two loops back around times 80. minus and now going this way 1 times minus 40 so that's just minus 40 and then plus and plus here so I don't need to worry about that last but not least let's do k and k is positive all right, so from right to left, so going to the right, 1 times minus 80, minus, then 4 times 80, 3, 4 times 80, boom. Okay, now we have all the moment components. Oops, and this is a vector, guys. All right, so now let's see what that yields. It gives us m naught or m o. So let's see. Minus sixteen hundred plus uh, six. I'm sorry, not sixteen hundred. Uh, minus one sixty plus one sixty. So we have zero i. Let's see, this is 160 plus 40. Uh, that will be, oh, and it's negative too. So it's going to be minus 200 J. And then this will be minus 80 minus 320, which is, minus, okay, so it's minus 4. K. Okay. And this is this is our result for the moment being transferred over from our force to point O. Okay. And now 
there is one more thing I want to do, which is uh, go over it. I think the faster approach, which is I mentioned earlier that if you had drawn a line of action going through it, and it actually show you that the force ends up intersecting point C, right? Then we can just take the distance from uh, from O to C and use that as our R for the moment, okay? Because all we need to do is shift over that this dotted red line to point O. That's uh, five five feet in the in the I direction, okay, in a negative I direction, and we end up with the total moment being transferred from that force over to O. Okay. So what I mean by that is let's do the distance from O to C, which is going to be 5i and then 0j 0k this will this will be much faster okay so now we can just do it in one line all right so I said in one of the other videos I said just pretend like you're factoring this 5 times 80 5 times minus 80 5 times negative 40 but then pay attention to the directions I know that 5 cross 80i, so i cross i is going to be 0, so I'm going to ignore this one right away. You can't, they're parallel, so you can't cross them with each other. All right, but now let's pay attention to this one. This one will be, let's do plus, okay, 5 times minus 80. And then worry about the direction after i cross j. Okay, and now plus 5 times minus 40, and then uh, that is I cross K. Okay, so this, this will be, and then we know a little trick that's I, J, K, I, J, K draw it twice and then if you're crossing stuff over towards the right that's going to be positive and if you're crossing stuff going towards the left that's negative okay so what I mean by that is right here in yellow hold on a second right here in yellow we have I cross J so if we do we I cross J that'll give us a K okay so we're, we're going to have uh, minus 400k. All right, and then here we have i cross k over here. I cross k. So we can't really do i cross k going to the right. So we need to go to the left. So here we have i cross k. Since we're going to the left, we're going to have a negative. So negative j. So it's going to be uh, negative j, okay, and then negative negative is positive, so we're going to be left with 5 times 4, that's 200 j, okay. Uh, reorganizing it, we're going to have a knot, so you, you can see that we get the same result if we... Um, take the distance from O to the point of application or take the distance from O to the point uh, a point where the line of action of the force intersects the x-axis okay and this will be, this will be the result for both okay as you can see all right guys thanks for taking a few minutes to look at this video hope it helps you out I look forward to doing these and helping you guys along the way. Thanks, guys. Bye.